right, welcome back to the Watch Magic Podcast. This is episode number 28. Uh, and this podcast is just a kind of group of college kids uh, talking about anything that's really interesting to us. Uh, we're all uh, big Marvel fans, uh, some uh, comic book nerds, uh, especially. We all like, uh, we're all former athletes ourselves uh, from high school, even though one of us who unfortunately isn't here, Justin, uh, he's still an actual athlete in college. Um, but yeah, one of the things that does pique our interest, uh, at least for two of the members of this podcast, is soccer or football. Got to specify that. And it's a big, big day <laughs> because the Premier League has started back up. So, Andres, I know you want to talk all about that. So I'll let you take that. Oh, yes. Um, so the Premier League kicked off last week. So the second game week just happened this past week. And then the other top five leagues just started like Serie A, the Bundesliga. But, yeah, the Premier League is the main focus because Jacob is a Premier League team fan in Liverpool. And it's been not the greatest of starts for a supposed top two team on paper. I, I'm a bit shocked with um, their results so far. But, um, yeah, not the best starts coming off two ties. One 2-2 draw against Fulham, which, honestly, Fulham, like, I get it, they're at home. But they're a newly promoted team. It's got to be better. you got to pull off a win there. And then... The Crystal Palace game that just happened. Um, Liverpool, they they dominated the first half of possession, and then they just go on to concede off a counterattack. And then Darwin start, striker Darwin Nunez, new signing, very expensive signing, gets sent off of headbutting a guy, and he gets a re- straight red, three-match ban. That makes things a lot harder for Liverpool. And then okay. my boy. Wait, yeah, yeah. Go, so go you back can't to the just gloss over <laughs> someone getting headbutted. You can't all be right. like, oh yeah, you know, someone got headbutted. <laughs> well, cause, all right. Yeah, there's actually a lot to have in this past weekend, so we'll, we'll we'll dive into that a little later. But we'll go back to this headbutt first. So Darwin Nunez, he's from Uruguay. Liverpool just signed him for about a hundred million, including add-ons. Um, very pricey. Damn. He in preseason he hasn't been the greatest. Um, he. Oh, well. All right, he, he had he had a get a goal. Actually, there. no. In the preseason, he'd been pretty good. I would say. Well, I don't know. He had a few games where he didn't do anything. And then he had a hat trick one game, but like he's not living up to the. He should be doing better. That that's 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 okay. the thing. He should be doing better. So then this this first game or the second game, first home game for Liverpool this season was his debut at Anfield, which is Liverpool's iconic home stadium. Um, the fans were getting rowdy for him, hyping him up. Liverpool go one zero down. Tensions like Liverpool like. They they want to they want to get back in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, they're playing Crystal Palace and the defenders like egging him on. Joachim Anderson he like sh- gives him a little shove and uh, Darwin Nunez what he does like he turns around and heads butts him. <laughs> like it's not a big headbutt but it's like a little like like pretty noticeable nudge. But- okay, so was it like on a scale of like just barely bumping heads to who was the Real Madrid head coach that head butted Zidane. Zidane. Zidane, yeah. yeah. Who like like wound his head up and yeah. <laughs> put it into a dude's chest. Like, what are we talking on the scale there? Um, I would say it's like uh four or five. It wasn't it wasn't okay. it wasn't a big wind up, but like it was it was a it headbutt. Was definitely he, a headbutt. He, like, he attacked like he, he, he clearly ran. did it on purpose. Okay. Yes, it was on purpose. He was so provoked, was, but yes, yeah, he yeah, still okay. you, you don't do that. You don't do that in the game. And then now he's a three match ban. And then, so yeah, that that made things a lot harder for Liverpool. They were man down, but luckily my boy Luis Diaz scored a crazy screamer to tie the game, and then the game just finished like that. So Jacob, let me talk to you, Liverpool fan. What are your thoughts right now with the team? What's what's going on? Like, just how are you feeling? Um, disappointed. <laughs> um, I feel like we really are missing Sadio Mane. Um. It's tough to see him go, but I mean, hopefully, you know, we spent money well on other players. Um, Phillips is horrible. You know his first name, but he's he's horrible. Um, like he played, like, he was awful in that game. Um, I do think the refs in the second game were horrible. Like I just think they all around were just terrible refs. But um, I don't know. I think that. Like I'm hopeful because it's only two games in the season, but at the same, and we destroyed city in the uh, community shield but at the same time like we need to pick up the pace if we're going to be winning the um premier league and then you know also if we're going to be winning the other cups so um i don't know 
I think that um, I think that Jurgen Klopp's going to get it together. Um, but um, as of right now, I'm very disappointed with how things are going. Yeah, no, I I, t- I totally get that. It's 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 like Liverpool, like they're they're a top two team. They're supposed to be the favorite to go up against City and rival them. But you could also argue that right now, City having two wins in their first two games are basically run it's so it's still early but like with Liverpool dropping points right off the bat and City getting six points from two games like they could be basically have the league already because City is unreal they're like Holland has been cooking they they just look phenomenal and then the other game among the two of the top or the big six teams in Tottenham Chelsea was wild it was a 2-2 yeah. tie at um Stamford Bridge which is Chelsea Stadium and Oh my god, like it was it was such a fun watch. Great game to watch. So Chelsea so Tottenham have a coach, Antonio Conte, who coached Chelsea in twenty sixteen, seventeen season, and I think a little bit of seventeen, eighteen, if not all of it, but definitely sixteen, seventeen. He won the Premier League with them. Um then he just left because he wanted to uh, just go to a new team, whatever. Um, but yeah, he was former Chelsea coach. Now he's coaching Spurs. And then they came to play Chelsea this past weekend. And Chelsea's coach is Thomas Tuchel, who's a pretty tall, lanky German guy. He's a pretty solid coach as well. Uh, he won the Champions League with Chelsea just the season before last. So both good coaches, both big teams playing up against each other. And yeah, so there's a lot of hype going in this game. We go into the game, Chelsea go... 1-0 up off a crazy volley off a corner from Khalidou Koulibaly. Then Spurs get back into the game off already a questionable play because it wasn't necessarily in the buildup. But so Chelsea are on an, an attack. Um, a Spurs defender, he fouls him, but the ref think, just deems it as clean. And then they gain possession. And then off that possession, they score. So fans on Twitter already very mad with that. But the refs don't overturn it because it was supposedly not in the buildup, so they, they can't technically review it. So it's 1-1 at that point. Chelsea go up 2-1 again. Both their goals legit, but Thomas Tuchel, uh, Chelsea's coach, what he does is he runs down the sideline yelling, like, p- pumping his fist like in front of Tottenham's coach, Antonio Conte. He's just like screaming. like t- Tensions are high already. Like They're getting in each other's faces, but yeah, the game's just going on. So it's 2-1. Then we go into the 90th minute. Um, Tottenham get a corner. Uh, they have a long-haired defender, very curly, long hair. Um, Mark Kukurea. Um, so he, he's just on the corner, like marking a guy, whatever. And Spurs have a defender, um, Christian Romero. What he does is he yanks the dude's hair, pulls him down onto the ground. The, yeah, the refs don't catch that. And <laughs> off that corner, um, Tottenham score. And it's a 2-2 tie. That's so, insane. Yeah, and that's not and that's not even where it ends. So that happens, and Chelsea's coach Thomas Tuchel is pissed. He is mad. So at the end of the game, you know, like coaches how they shake hands, whatever. What happens here is Conte and Tuchel go to shake hands. Conte just wants a quick handshake, just move on with his day. Tuchel holds his hand with a firm grip he's, as he's trying to walk by, pulls him back, and they start yelling at each oh, other, get in each that, other's yeah. faces. All the, the bench, the players on the field, they all run in. It's a big, like, scuffle. It's just it's a big argument. And then the ref goes on to give both managers a red card, so they can't even, they, they can't even step onto the field for next game. So, it, so it was funny. just wild. That game... One of the best games I watched in a while. It was yeah. nuts. Whenever coaches are going at it, it's so entertaining. It's I love like, it. Their whole thing <laughs> is that like they need to represent the team. They need to be the mature ones. So when they're just going at it, it's like, oh, this is getting serious, <laughs> and I like it. No, it it was great. It was just a it's just a lanky German dude versus a kind of shorter Italian dude. So they're both oh, that's feisty. a perfect combination. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're both going at each other's throats. Yes. Oh my god. That's so funny. It, it was mean, fantastic. Yeah, because, I mean, that actually happened, um, not that exact thing, but uh, Nick Sirianni, the Eagles head coach yes. during the preseason game against the Jets, <laughs> got pissed at Robert Sala, the Jets head coach. What the um, F, Sala? Yeah, like, it was, it was hilarious listening to the, com- uh, the commentators because <laughs> it was obviously, like, NFL preseason game. Like, no one's taking it, like, too seriously. Jalen Hurts scrambles out of the pocket, whatever, is clearly out of bounds. And then a Jets linebacker just nails him out of bounds. And, like, very close to a fight breaking out during the game, but thank God it didn't. 
and Sirianni is looking directly across the field, like walks away from the scrum to go make eye contact with the other head coach. And it's very clear what he says. You don't need to be a lip reader. You can look the clip up. It's very obvious what he says. The commentator goes, you know, I agree with Sirianni completely. <laughs> I know exactly. I, I can't say that on television, but I agree with him. He's right to be mad. It was so funny. I love a coach's fight. It's just, yeah. it's great. It's great content. It's so good. It's so good. Because there was also, um, during the, this might have been last year or two years ago, whatever the Titans and the Ravens were in the playoffs, where Vrabel oh, and yeah. Harbaugh were <laughs> on midfield just yelling at each other. And Vrabel's like, go back and coach, like, whatever. And then Harbaugh's trying to get in his face. It's, oh, I love when teams have, like, such good, like, rivalries. Like, it's so, it makes it so much better. Like, it, like, cause, like, they're both just so pissed off the entire time. They're like, I want to win so badly and just beat this team. Like, God, it just makes it so good. I actually got two things, uh, real quick. Um, one, you guys remember the big Truss video from, um, the, um, that, what Mark Ingram did? Yeah, for yes. Mark? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, big Truss, woo, woo. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> classic. And then um, one of the uh, defenders for the Titans did it back to them after they yeah. beat them. And it was, like, also hilarious. And then Derek Henry, like, and Mark Ingram went to Bam. They weren't at Bam at the same time, but they both they went still to went Bam. to, yeah. You got Derek Henry walking up on the stage, like, smiling and saying it's all jokes. But, like, yeah. there's nothing about it. I thought well, it was there, funny. There is that really iconic picture of – Derrick Henry, like, at Alabama playing. Yeah. And it's Mark Ingram, who, did he win the Heisman at Alabama? Yeah, they both did. Yeah. So, yeah, because it was like, oh, you know, Mark Ingram's coming back to Alabama and he's going for the coin toss. And he looks tiny compared yeah. to Derrick Henry. Like, he looks like his child. <laughs> it's like, oh, this is what they're pumping out now. Like, <laughs> yeah, you were good back then, but you aren't that thing. Because <laughs> that's not a person. He's scary. That uh, is that... a linebacker that could run a 4-4. Four, four. There, I mean, oh Derek Henry was cold that year. He actually... Um, he was him. He actually beat out Chris McCaffrey that year for the Heisman. Yeah. Um, but that, that was, I remember that was 2015 when that happened. Um, mm -hmm. But I guess more back onto the soccer thing. Um, so you two, Peter and Raj, yes. have to pick out a Premier League team right now. Peter, I know you've said that you are... I'm just following him. Christian Pulisic. I don't really care where he goes. I just love him. Whatever I do need to add you hate the most, Jacob? Um, Real Madrid or City, I guess? Or Man United? When I've been a Liverpool fan, United has it like... United is like the man-hated like team, but like... No, no, so, no. I yeah, want the I team guess. Jacob specifically hates because Liverpool hates them. Oh, then United. Okay, I'll be. I don't care how bad they are. I just want to be Dude, on the team. Dude, they are games. bad. We actually like they are bad, bad. Week. Yeah, we played this week. Oh, amazing! Um, they so are can watch bad. The game. But uh, Peter, I was gonna add. So following Pulisic, but there is Leeds United, which they have an American coach, Jesse Marsh. Yeah. He used to coach the Red Bulls. Then he went on to coach like the other Red Bull affiliated teams in like in Salzburg, which is in Austria, and then Leipzig in Germany. And then he went to Leeds and. Um, he ended up signing two American players in Tyler Adams and Brendan Harrison. So it's a very big American team in the Prem right now. Interesting. Ooh, he's also from Jersey. He's from um, – Oh, I'm pretty sure. I, I, I got to get one of their jerseys now. Peter's nationalism is coming they, out in full. It's my jerseyism is coming he's out. A, he's a patriot. He's a patriot. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's only when it comes to sports. Like, I – like – it's just it comes out so aggressively, yeah. and there's no reason for it. But it's like that TikTok sound. Get up, blank, blank. It's time to salute the flag, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> literally. It's like it's only when it comes to like the Olympics or soccer. Yeah, like, that's it. Like I don't even follow soccer enough to like even be called like a true fan of it. But damn, I love watching Americans actually show out in the British Premier League. Yeah, that's I yeah. Mean, Leeds is that American team right now. We're still, and the, it was funny when. For the Leeds, uh, for Leeds United. What's up? Shout out Mini Mentor. Oh, Mini Mentor, yeah. From the side Leeds guy. For, shout out to the side men, of course. Um, no, do. why are we free plug? Stop. 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 You know, Stop. You gotta... We're fans. Stop. I don't care. Don't get out free advertising. <laughs> Anyways, um, with Kristen Pulisic, though, there's rumors that he's going to be headed to Manchester United on loan. So, you, like, his main team would be Chelsea. Mm hmm. But 
you know, you're still playing on Vanu. That is it. so cool that you could literally just loan players. Yeah. Like, yeah. That would be sure. wild. Just like in the middle of the playoffs, and it's just like, oh, yeah, don't worry. Uh, like, Justin Herbert got knocked out of the playoffs. Oh, guess what? He's on another team now. Well, I, that'd be too OP. It's only during the transfer window. So only like, oh, so this is yeah, okay. only in January and then like in, in like they're over the summer on the off season. I see. But you can be loaned though for like an extended period of time. Right. So well, like yeah. you could be like, so like if you were to loan like Trent to, or no, not let's do like um, Holland to Liverpool, like this past season. And like, he was loaned like the entire soccer year. He could have played for Liverpool in the, like in the Champions League final, right? Wait, uh, you're saying for last season? Yeah. So like, like if, if Dortmund loaned him in the summer going into the season? This past, this, uh, this the summer going into last season. Yeah. So if yeah. you got, okay, okay. If it's a year long, it depends on the agreement because there's six month loans, there's year, like season long loans. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So theoretically, at the, if like if you loaned them at the beginning of the season, they could be playing in the championship. Okay. Except for when you're playing against a team, there that you can like a lot of the time. There's clauses where you can't play against uh, a team that technically like is like owns you still. So like Lingard, yeah, he was he was is United. He was a United player and he got loaned out to West Ham. But when West Ham he played every game for West Ham, but once uh, West Ham played United, he wasn't he eligible play to play. Him. Yeah. Okay. okay. So like I can't put Justin Herbert on the Titans uh... like part way through the playoffs. No. Not Damn so. it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be wild. <laughs> oh, my Imagine God. Imagine the Bills. Devin Singletary sucks. Hold up. Let me get Derrick Henry real quick. Yeah. Yeah, just partway through. It's like, yeah, just loan them all of the players. <laughs> and they don't announce it until that Sunday. <laughs> so it's like they're coming in, and it's like the Royal Rumble, like a WWE, where it's like, and now you're a running back. <laughs> From the University of Alabama. It's like, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> like, the other team's like, oh my god, we're gonna die. Like, this is, like, just absolute maulers. And then it's Derrick Henry. It's like, oh no. <laughs> oh god, yeah. It is, honestly, it's so nice having football back. I, I guess both football and football. Yes, like, yes. It's nice having... The like, fall's just, the best. Just sports yeah. are back. Like, yes. they are... Yeah, sports ball is so back right now, and it's so nice because even watching, even how terrible the preseason games are, they are so hard to watch. But when you get those like good moments, it's like ah, yes, <laughs> yes. this is why I watch football. Speaking of like, preseason, uh, Jacob, what were your thoughts on Mister Kenny Pickett? Mister Kenny Pickett, yeah, coming Ten in word. during the second half of the Steelers. Who did they play? Uh, Seahawks. Seahawks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I was impressed. Um, I thought he did a good job. Um, I mean, statistically, he did a good job. He seemed like he was pretty comfortable out there. I thought the other two quarterbacks did a good job as well. Um, it's the preseason, so that's what I'm. That's one thing I am hesitant about because, um, like for example, the Ravens have been like I think it's six years in a row that they've gone undefeated in the. Um, preseason yeah they're like 23 and 0 in the preseason Jeez. <laughs> yeah like that's absolutely ridiculous wow but they won the super bowl um so i am like that is one thing that I, like i'm hesitant mm -hmm. about but i think that he's performed well and um you know looks like he's on like you know good like a track to you know be a solid nfl player yeah. um so yeah, I was happy about that. Um, I was happy with George Pickens. It's wild the amount oh, of like I love NFL the memes. young boy. I love that. The fact that yeah, it's crazy the amount of like hype he's been getting. Like yeah, he's a menace. I love it. But like it's just it's absolutely wild how Jacob, like he's he listens to world. Benito and eats ramen before games. <laughs> and, you know, like I'm saying like like back like. Because I was watching, he played at Georgia, so I was, um, I wasn't watching Georgia like um, that extensively. Yeah. Because like, there's an SEC team. I'd like see George Pickens, so I was like, okay, he looks like he's you know kind of the real deal. Yeah. So his like this year role, he was injured one year, um, or yeah, for part of a year, and then he got um, he played this season, but it was only towards the end of the season. But he still was looking like you know he was that he was guy. that guy. Yeah. Bama, he cooked. Uh, 
one of our cornerbacks in the national championship. Very unhappy. That like about diving that. catch, like yeah. in stride. That was filthy. Yeah. He's him. He's done that. George Pickett has done that a lot. But yeah, yeah I was happy when he got uh, my corner got torched. Um, but anyways, I mean, he then he you know he was like I thought he was going to be good in the NFL, but um, there were other receivers that just weren't going to get drafted higher than him because mm-hmm. they had you know better production and all that. Yeah. Um, but now, like when they're he that, is a steal in the second round, like he that is, is him. Insane. He's him. When I saw that we got George Pickens, I was like so like excited. Yeah. For him. And then, like when that picture came out, I completely <laughs> thought, like I didn't think that he was actually. But I thought that was just a random guy. <laughs> like to be completely honest, and then it turns out that that actually was George Pickens. I was like, wow, that's insane. And then it just sort like you know, everybody's just like it's you know it's a. I don't know. Everybody's on the George Pickens like trend and bandwagon, whatever you want to call it. But I mean, it's yeah. one big thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was impressed with him. Um, he did. I remember that one uh, little clip of him uh, pushing over the DB. <laughs> yeah, just benching him. Fun fact: his name's actually Kobe Bryant. Oh uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's Kobe with a C. <laughs> oh yeah. I remember I texted that in the chat. I'm like, George Pickens yeah. just murdered Kobe Bryant or some shit. Oh, I hate you. <laughs> I hate you. So, um, yeah, I mean, he was um, – and he wasn't a bad corner in college, just – No, um, he just got torched. <laughs> yeah, yeah but, I mean, that's just a tough look, just getting planted on – like, you know. Yeah. And I but, feel like it's also, like, like what you were saying, I, I think, in the group chat at the time, too, is, like, these are, like – the backups like these might not be like the true starters like these might not be the best players whatever but it still is like these are all good trends to see where it's like something like that like that's just pure strength like i don't care who he's lining up against throwing a db is crazy but it's still like we still have to manage our expectations a little bit like he's not going to come in to be megatron off the bat but he's still going to be good (laughs) yeah like he can like push over kobe bryant Uh yeah but like he's not going to be pushing over like Jalen Ramsey. No, like, Jalen Ramsey is going to. Oh, do they play the Rams this season? I kind of want to see. I hope. Wait, he, wait. I'll look it up. I'll look it up. Uh, but there, I also remember that clip in college when he was playing Michigan. Um, what this it was just this past year, and he shushed the sideline, and then um, the ball got snapped. He did the same thing he did to Kobe Bryant, pushed him over, and then shushed the sideline a second time. So that was um, so filthy. Yeah. And and Michigan got destroyed in that game, so it was like just even more fitting. But um, dude, no, I think that I'm on. I'm, I know I'm. Per, I'm looking. Um, you know, at the Steelers a lot. You know, with some optimism right now. I think that's the best way to put it. Yeah, that's good. Like I said, like, it's, it's a likable team. It's a likable team. Suspended. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> throw by week six. Week six. They don't play the Rams. Uh-huh. So sad. Uh-huh. He's gonna have to have like. If you were to be an all pro, like an all pro lock by week six, you'd have to have like, ooh, George Probably Pickens like, will be going against Sauce. Uh, ooh. What is that week? It's October second. Yeah, the Jets. That's yeah. assuming Sauce lines up with him. He probably will because he'll be he will. number one. Yeah. Will he? Will um, Pickens be? Because I mean, Clay Claypool. I mean, I don't have any hopes about him. But they'll they'll figure out. Yeah. Him this rate Pickens will be playing because we have Deontay Johnson, we have Chase Claypool, Pat Fryermuth, but he's a tight end, and then we have um, George Pickens. We have some other guys like one of our rece- um, like one of our receivers actually tore his. I don't know if he tore his ACL. Well, that's just like just a knee injury. injury mm-hmm. but... He got like injured in some way, and it's a season-ending injury. So yeah. like, um, yeah. although it's... honestly, I think George Pickens is going to be your number one. By yeah, the end of the season like, probably just yeah. the way that he plays is like. He's a deep, like, burner-type player. It's like, that's going to be your number one right there. 100%. So, um, I don't know. I think that, like, even in college, like, he had somewhat competent. He had a pretty good quarterback, like, a good college quarterback his first year. But he hasn't had, like, a good quarterback, I would say, like, for about two years. Yeah. So, that should be – like, I'm not saying that Kenny Pickett, Mitch Trubisky, or Mason Rudolph will be, like, a good quarterback. You know, I th- truly, like, I think Mr. Trubisky looks actually pretty solid. Yeah, he like, looks pretty good. As a starter. Yeah, I, mean, I don't think he's going to be like a world beater, but I think he's not going to make stupid mistakes like he was doing in Chicago because Pace yeah. is a fraud. 
<laughs> and like they were horrible because then after that Trubisky went to Buffalo and was learning on, under uh, Dable and like that offense with Josh Allen so he lo- he looked actually a lot better with the Bills too yeah. like so I think coming to the Steelers I think he's a pretty like solid quarterback he's not going to be like winning you games maybe but like although of course he could develop he could be like that guy by the end of the season but who knows Hopefully he won't be losing us games. exactly i think yeah. i don't think he'll be losing games for us yeah and um you brought up a good point chicago the chicago bears suck. <laughs> they look so <laughs> bad it's not even funny horrible matt nagy is horrible <laughs> we're not, not a fan of matt nagy yes. um just like to put that out there um but no, the Bears are just don't see like, and I feel bad for Justin Fields, but like they just don't see Dude, like he Justin. Got, I am so happy the Giants fleeced them for two first round picks. Like that was Thank so God. good because and they look like Roquan Smith, their best player, doesn't want to play there. Oh yeah, he's like they don't want to pay <laughs> me what I deserve. I don't want to play here. And then the, it's like the organization's like, well, Roquan's being very difficult. Like he doesn't want to take a team friendly contract. It's like, no, cause he doesn't want to take a terrible contract. Cause he's one of the best linebackers in the NFL. And you're like, well, we'll backload the contract for you. It's like, no, I want to get paid. Like give me my money. Yeah. And the, the bears are just horrible. I'm so bad. Like, I really don't have that much of a reason to hate the Bears, like, as a franchise or, like, anything. I feel yeah. bad. Nah. The Bears are not. Yeah. <laughs> you know who does look a lot better, though? In that division. Just the food. Lions look a lot better. They got some dogs on that team. <laughs> I wish that we could, like, have the, um, like, hard knocks in the season, like, on a horrible team. Yeah. Like, it would be, like, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> ever. If the, we could have had one, like, when the Browns went 0-16, that the entire would have, year, oh, oh, my gosh, that would have been amazing. That would have been, oh, God. I, yeah, I do wish that, because they have hard knocks for Detroit for the preseason. I think they might be doing an in-season hard knocks again. I don't know well, who I, it is, though. Part of me hopes that that team just is either amazing. Just horrible. Or, <laughs> yeah, it's one or the other. Because I just want to see, like, the inner, like, the locker room. Um, interactions like if it, the team is horrible and everybody knows yeah we're not going to be doing well like the coach is probably going to get fired I want to see like you know what's that like yeah like what's the team how's the team react to everything yeah because mm-hmm. I mean like Brian, um, Dan Campbell their Lions head coach is the biggest football guy I think I have ever seen in my life like this dude like when you think of like a meathead football coach like that is this guy <laughs> Like, he eats, sleeps, and breathes football and hitting people in the face. Like, that is it. Like, there is nothing else going on in his head besides that. And it is so awesome to watch. I mean, he's clearly won over, like, his locker room. Like, players absolutely seem to love him. Yeah. Um, I mean, he really puts his heart, you know. He's like crying, like every other scene. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's like, "Man, I love you guys. Like, we go oh, cool win for you." And they're like, "We love you, coach." Like, it's so funny. It's kind of so is, funny. Like, it sucks how like horrible they are. Yeah, like, I know. It's <laughs> so sad. Um, yeah. Ooh, one show recommendation or on Netflix. Okay. So there's this. Um, so back in 2012, there was this this football player from Notre Dame. Um, Manti oh Teo. Oh. Is this Manti Teo? Teo? Oh, God. So, yeah, Manti Teo. So I, ex- please I, explain I, for those who might not know. Yeah. Oh, my god. So Manti Teo was a very highly recruited player coming out of Notre Dame. <sighs> he um, decided to – he probably could have gone to the NFL draft his, only in his junior – or after his junior year, but decided to go and play um, in football there in his senior year. So um, he had, was apparently um, dating this girl online named Lene Kakua that he actually never met. They met on Facebook, apparently, but he never met her in person or never had like a FaceTime with her or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So um, apparently one night, I don't actually, I don't know if it's night, morning or whatever, but um, one of his grandparents passed away and Lene Kakua, the fake girlfriend, also passed away on that same day. So, 
I guess part of Notre Dame's like part of it being like he's a devout Christian, so like and like like that goes well with Notre Dame's brand. The fact that he's like you know a good player and he like just experienced all this loss, he had like the nation like yeah like, at his back because he played like he like balled out during that game too or something. Okay. It was like he was like crazy good. He was like he um I mean he did a really nice job that year um and Notre Dame went on he actually made it to the Heisman ceremony. He lost to Johnny Manziel that year, actually. <laughs> Money. There was so much going on that year. <laughs> what a year. Um, Kansas State actually had a guy at the Heisman ceremony. You wouldn't have thought. Yeah, he was cold that year. I'm not going to lie. Um, so then he led Notre Dame to a 12-0 season. Um, and they played Alabama in the national championship. Alabama was 11-1. and And Alabama – was up twenty eight nothing going in halftime and beat them forty two to fourteen. Um, <laughs> Sorry, what? just had to put that out there that Alabama beat them by a lot. Had to plug that yeah. in. <laughs> was not close. I've watched that game many times when I was younger. It was an amazing game. Um, but anyway, <laughs> after that, it came out that his girlfriend was not real. So yeah. he had to go throughout a lot of like you know, this entire, um, I guess, draft process answering questions you know about his playing ability but more importantly about his girlfriend that never <laughs> yeah because it would of. always like the the interviews would always be like it would be like one person asked him like a single question about like playing football the next is like so why did you fake having a girlfriend <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> every single question is just that oh my gosh. exactly and it's it's a it was a really tough situation because he it's not that necessarily that he he even faked it it's just he got. I think he got catfished. just straight catfished. He totally got catfished. He did, so, he and did. it's like horrible. Like I, I, it's horrible that the person did that, uh, for whatever reason, like it may be. And if you watch this documentary, it's called um, "Untold," I think stories or something like yeah. that. Yeah, they're just untold. The like the girlfriend who never existed. It's um, two episodes on Netflix. I watched it. Thought it was pretty good, um, but you'll like hear the motive and the motive is even like um like the mo none of there's nothing that could have justified the motive but like it's just one um he's an idiot for i think he's an idiot for, for having, even believing for, this it's like yeah you've never actually seen this person ever like, yeah like it's absolutely ridiculous yeah um and there's a lot that goes into it but um i was think um there's one thing i was about to say um Oh no, I can't remember it. But bottom line is, highly recommend it. Um, yeah, good show. Amazing. So, yeah, um, I just wanted to plug in that I am getting myself ready for the football season. I was just been educating myself today. I spent a decent amount Go of ahead. time watching uh Kadarius Tony highlights, and he was a dog at school. <laughs> Let's go! But because because yeah, we were talking about receivers earlier, so like sparked that. I remember that. Yes. But um, yes. no, I mean like I'm I'm hyped to see more of him this season. But then again, like we have we do it have a new coaching Giants. new coaching yeah. staff and new front office. But like we're the again. Giants. Our O line. We have uh. Danny Dimes also like I love him for the memes, but all, he's just not good. So I don't know what to expect, but I hope like I like I was thinking Kadarius Tony deserves better, but I hope I hope he can just I don't know yeah. I just hope because he he seems like just like a true like gadget player because he is so unbelievably shifty. It's like weird. So yeah. like I really hope it's we'll be able to see him a little bit in preseason, just to, like see like what they're drawing up drawing up because like they had like. The, they had, like, for this last preseason game, the Giants had, I think, the starters play, like, maybe, like, one drive, like, if that. And then it was like, all right, then second stringers go in. And it's like, well, you should probably have them play a little bit more <laughs> than that. This but granted, like there still are two more preseason games, so, like, that's kind of makes sense. And also, it makes a lot of sense because, I mean, look at the other preseason games where Zach Wilson, we thought he tore his ACL first preseason game. It was a non-contact injury. So, thank God, apparently that is not what happened. It was like a... It was, it was meniscus like or something. It was like a meniscus or something. Oh, okay. It was something significantly less harmful than an ACL tear. He might, he may or may not be in for the first game of the season. Um, but, it, like, he's A-OK. -okay. Um, the Cougar Hunter is all right. <laughs> New York is safe. Um, yeah. So that's why I think it actually is probably smart to not have the starters go all out in the first preseason game. But 
should probably also get some reps in with against an actual team during a game setting so that way you're prepared for the first game. But yeah. who knows? I'm not a head coach of an NFL football team. I'm just sitting here on a podcast. So uh, I'd also like to point out that regardless of whether or not uh, Zach Wilson starts those games, you know, at the beginning to begin the season, the Jets will win at, at probably at max six to seven games. Seven is like a stretch too. So. Yeah. Well, the Jets- seven's a big stretch because they just lost Makai Becton again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh! He's this six foot seven, six foot eight, like three hundred forty pound <laughs> behemoth of a man, and he is out with an I think an ACL tear for like the second year in a row, oh, or like man. I don't know if it was an ACL tear last year, but it was like some knee injury. I think it's because he came into camp like overweight or like above where they wanted him at. And then I think he was like trying to drop weight, and then it was like during a practice or something he tore his ACL, so he's out again. And he was a really yes. solid blindside blocker. So Zach Wilson will again be running for his life <laughs> again. So who knows? Who knows about the Jets? New York football's doing real well. Don't worry, we got the Bills. We oh got- come on! <laughs> <laughs> and they're still in New York. Yeah. <laughs> Still technically in New York, so I got to take them. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm just vibing over here. The Eagles look good, and now it's just a waiting it, game. It is Are the you... Eagles' division to lose. Exactly. And, exactly. and if they easily. mess it up, I'm going to be uh, not a very happy person. Jacob, the Eagles are better than the Cowboys. You cannot tell me. Yeah, yeah Jacob, Jacob, please. Who do the Cowboys have? They traded away their best receiver. All they have left is CeeDee Lamb. Their O-line is terrible now. Well, not terrible, but. Not they traded a- away Lyle Collins, one of their best blockers, to the Bengals. Like uh, they have Trevon Z- Diggs, who gives up a thousand plus yards, but you know he's a ball hawk. He gets a million interceptions. <laughs> Am I right, Jacob? He's so good, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he plays receiver on defense. Part of me doesn't want to say that he's so good because even at Bama, he was like good, but like he was just like a step away from like making enough plays. So like. Yeah, I don't. I don't know about that. If I can even say he's like so good, but he did. A, he had a good. He had a great year. But anyways, good, yeah. just the interceptions. Um, I'm never gonna let him down for giving up one k plus yards. And there's corners who were better than him who gave up less yards, but didn't have the number of picks, and they were ranked significantly below him. I, it, that's true. But like any year, you get that many picks. Like it's a good. It's a good year regardless. Like you can give out up like double the amount of yards, and it's not a good look at all. But if you got that many picks, I'll like, give him the picks. He's a ball hawk, but I'm never gonna forgive him for the amount of yards he gave up. That is just horrendous. Forgive him. You should be praising him. I know. That's what I was about to <laughs> yeah, say. Wait, Why are you? Wait. Why do you want to? Like, bro, you're not a Cowboys. Yeah. You're not gonna let him. You're not gonna let him off the hook. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Are you also unironically like? Is your room green for any reason other than? No, I, I just... literally just did this because it's the only light color where it works. Oh, okay, it's the Eagles. But maybe you're trying to make like you know subliminal very... messaging. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of being an Eagles fan. Yeah. Eagles. So depending on which source you use, he gave up between 700 and 1,068 yards receiving. That's not good. Either wow. end of that spectrum is not good. <laughs> <laughs> but he he is an absolute dog when it comes to turnovers. And some of those can be very back-breaking, like, interceptions. So I will absolutely give him that. But, Jacob, why do you think the Cowboys are better than the Eagles? Yes, please enlighten or me. Or why do you think it's not the Eagles' division to lose? Like, do you think Washington is just coming out of nowhere and beating the <laughs> Eagles like, for the division? Carson Wentz like that. Oh, I'm sorry. Commander Howell will take over from there. He he's taken over. Yeah, Carson Wentz is horrible. Uh, <laughs> he's horrible. He deserves to play in Chicago under Matt. <laughs> oh, wow! Wow! Uh, that might be a little too far. Yeah, <laughs> that's a little bit much, Jacob. Um, but I don't know. I mean, the Cowboys just seem like I don't. Did you guys beat the Cowboys last season? Last year. Oh, yeah, God. I don't think so. Okay, like I just it was, a, gotta, close, I, it was a really close game, but the last game uh, we played them, it was a uh, week seventeen game, so it didn't matter. Oh, I feel like then you guys got to like prove like some oh, part through. Jacob, the you want to hear something? I do not see the any Cowboys... close games. <laughs> Wait, really? I thought the one 
Fifty-one twenty-six. Oh right. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Was, which one? Was, yeah, and the previous one was, one was forty-one twenty-one. <laughs> it's the Cowboys division to lose. The Eagles are tra- terrible. Ooh. I don't even know what's wrong with the Eagles because I love the Eagles. <laughs> the Eagles are horrible. Um, the they, boss, the have you not seen her off season? <laughs> Yeah, but it's one thing to have a lot of pieces come in in the offseason and have those pieces perform. Bro, well. oh, they made the playoffs last yeah. year. <laughs> They're <laughs> not horrible. The division sucks, you know. Obviously, it's no, the NFC least. <laughs> no, no, yeah. <laughs> not the wild card. Oh, well. <laughs> AFC is harder than the uh, NFC. Everybody knows yes, that. That's know. not a statement. <laughs> but anyways, no, I think it's easier than the Cowboys. Like, How? I wouldn't. I I, I can't. The agree Cowboys with that. have not proven. Have not demonstrated to me that they are. Uh, they lost Eagles pieces season. on their good offense. Yeah, and their defense also got worse. How are they better? Because until the in, for me until the Eagles beat the uh, Cowboys. Because at the end of the day. None of this matters because we can all. Oh, can... okay, okay. I see where you're coming from now. All right, so, all right. Just, okay, like. Just like there's just nothing that like the Eagles could be really good on paper, okay. but still the Cowboys division. I know so saying, the precedent yes. is the Cowboys have already won in the past. You're not saying that the Eagles can't beat them. You're saying that they need to beat them to prove that it's their division to lose. Exactly. Got it. Okay. Exactly. Okay. All right, all right. That's okay. different. Yeah. That, that's, that's a lot better right. than just saying the Cowboys okay. are going to win the division. Okay. Any, even with that, we all we can all agree, no team from this division will win the Super Bowl this year. Hey, you know what? That's imagine, what about the imagine, Giants, imagine, but they went on a win the Super Bowl. So. Imagine. <laughs> well, that happened. Jacob, they I, never thought of it. It's happened QB. before. A backup QB couldn't have won a Super Bowl, right? Yeah. <laughs> Surely someone with a dad bod and that finished with an even 500 record on their career would never beat Tom Brady twice in the Super Bowl. Surely a backup Brady's wouldn't beat Tom Brady Brady's in the dad. Super Bowl either. Brady's dad and uncle. Exactly. Both out of the NFC East. <laughs> The other thing is the phrase kryptonite. <laughs> yeah, and then there's the Cowboys and the uh, Commanders. Just they look so. They Dude, look so. No one bad. showed up to the Commanders. It's depressing. Game. That's just depressing. Dude, That's like, just depressing. So like, it's sad. Like I mean, this is all the owner's fault though, because like it's what is it, Dan Snyder? I think yeah. he is like an actual just scumbag. Yeah, like, he does not deserve to have an NFL team. Like he needs to get booted. I, he must have like some blackmail on somebody <laughs> that they're not kicking him because like there was like that whole thing that came out about like all the different allegations like that were going oh, on, yeah. where it was like there was like all like upper management was all like corrupt and stuff like that. They also had to just recently they had to. I think they went. It might have been. Oh, I forget what. They basically had to uh, speak to Congress, essentially, because they had two books. They had one book that they wrote all their finances in, and then they had another one that they gave to the NFL. Oh, my gosh. And (laughs) what happened was they would say to the NFL, oh, we made X amount of money that was less than they actually made. So then they had to pay less to the NFL. So they just then pocket the rest of the money. Ah. Wow. Yeah. Ah. So obviously, I don't know how that investigation ended up turning out. That was like all alleged, whatever. But I wouldn't put it past Dan Snyder because he's a piece of shit. But I mean, I guess we'll see with the commanders. They got poop coming out of their pipes that are pouring onto fans. Uh, Other like parts of the stadium are just collapsing with people there. Well, it's it wasn't poop pipes. It was whatever. But they had. <laughs> two different pipes burst in the same section <laughs> last year during yeah. a game. Wow. And I, oh yeah, my I god, that, I do remember the video of like yeah. the fans. <laughs> it's not. It wasn't sewage. It was clean water. Oh Why my is it brown? god! Okay, you can't tell me that that's not brown. It's chemicals, <laughs> guys. It, it's like, well, oh, because that's so much better. Dude, Thanks. FedEx Field, the FedEx Field is just hell. Also, the amount of injuries on FedEx Field. Yes, all it's like in the like. It's one end zone. It's like in the towards, it's like the red zone of one side of the field. There's been like five to six, like either career ending or like ACL or like major injuries that have happened like in the same spot. 
Jeez. Like when Joe Theismann back in like the eighties had snapped his leg in half. That was like when Lawrence oh. Taylor went to go sack him, it was ah. like truly, this was one of the scariest things. That, like I've seen this clip. It's yeah. like, cause knowing ah. Lawrence Taylor, who's like supposedly like the best defender of all time, whatever. He was an absolute maniac. This dude smoked like an ounce of crack and then went out onto the field and played like an absolute madman. But this was the one time where he sacked the quarterback immediately gets up and starts calling for like the, the staff. It's oh, like the scariest yeah. thing on the planet. And this dude's leg is in half in the same spot. JJ Watt sacked Alex Smith. Alex Smith nearly died from that. From the, yes, that was the oh. same spot. Jeez. It was nearly identical. Like everything about that was nearly identical. It was in the exact same spot on FedEx field. And Alex Smith was out for like, years he too. was out for years and he nearly died from yeah. sepsis oh my gosh mm -hmm. because they botched the surgery at first and he was like on the verge of death oh my lord i've actually yeah. been to the, i've actually been to fedex field oh yeah. that is congrats yeah. for a soccer survived. game you should get a I, shirt. I did survive i survived fedex field <laughs> I survived. <laughs> Honestly, that dude, that 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 stadium was not only some, it oh, was how many times did RG three tear his ACL there? He tore oh there. Oh my gosh! Like, probably once or twice. I don't even remember. I think it's multiple times, dude. Like uh, he, that's, the worst, <sighs> that's one of the worst injuries I've seen, though. Like, yeah, that Just was bad. I the um, uh, Kevin Ware injury. Oh that my, one, that's no. gotta be the worst. That's, that's gotta, gotta be. Worst. That's gotta be the worst. You see the bone. You see the bone. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was the worst because I remember I was watching that with my uncle, who's a Duke fan. At, or he, he went to Duke, so he's a Duke, big time Duke Blue Devils fan, and he um. Like, we watched it happen, and then we saw also the bench just went, like... Yeah, just, like... They all went... Oh, yeah. like, dude. Just, like, shocked and, like, tried to hide from it. And it is, like... It's so literally out in the open. It's, it's like, so you crazy see because, like, the way the shot is, is, like, he, like, shoots whatever. And then it's just, like, it, you can just see it, like, in the corner. And, like, you yeah. could... Because I missed it the first time, like, that it happened. Mm -hmm. I remember watching the game live. I was just watching the basket. I had no idea what was happening. They just cut away. I'm like... What's going on? And I saw the clip later. I was like, oh, my God. That was just right there in the frame. It was really, really bad. I mean, because um, what also sucked about it is there's no way he would have gotten to block the shot anyways. And he did – like, Louisville did – what um, they wound up winning the championship that year, which was a nice – you know, it was yeah. good. Um, but he did end up transferring, I'm pretty sure. But anyways um, – I mean, that was just horrible. Like, that was really... I think that has to be the worst. Yeah, um, like, period. That's the that worst. Has to, it has to be. That has to be. Oh, oh, wait. Uh, Ryan Shazier, he got paralyzed from the legs now. Like, that is... Like, don't get me wrong. That is absolutely... Like, seeing that was, like... Just it was a exactly. very different like, experience, I feel like. Because, like, yeah. with, um, with Kevin Ware, it was, like... That was, like... Like, you knew exactly what was happening. Like, that was just, like... Oh my god! Like I need to look away. Whatever. But with yeah. Shazier, it's like when he hit him and then yeah. dropped and then didn't move. It was like, is he dead? Like because there was like that moment of like leaning forward where it was like because you have no idea what just happened because it's like yeah. where he starts like touching his back. It's like what is like what is happening? Like he went for the tackle. Like he like this shouldn't be happening. Like oh god it that. That was, like, scary. Yeah. That was, like, God. what is happening? No, because I didn't even realize it was, like, I didn't realize it was as, pretty sure I was watching with my dad. I didn't realize it was, like, as yeah. bad. Because mm -hmm. he, I remember he, like, like rolled over and his legs just kind of, like, flopped. flopped. In the yeah. Oh. And it's, like, oh, yeah. Like, it was, I mean, that was serious. Um, I mean, Teddy Touchwater? Oh, that was a bad one. Because it happened he twice. He got knocked out. Twice. When yeah. Oh. Because he got, because he got like a really bad concussion like earlier in the season, and then he came back yeah. and then got knocked out cold again. And then it happened and that to was him like, on the Broncos. Yeah, then he got hit on the Broncos. Like it, like that was bad. This was there, a bad sports injury. Yes, yeah. <laughs> there was actually so there was one. Um, Miami was playing Ohio State back in the day, and I know this because of my dad. So basically, the. Ohio, an Ohio State player goes at the knee of a Miami player. Oh, no. Oh. Don't even say it. Don't even say it. I know exactly where this is going. He just goes backwards. Like, if oh. you can see it in slow motion shot of it, too. Those are the worst. Um, if the viewers would like, I can play the clip. On no, the dude. <laughs> Actually, you showed, you showed me well, that I'll clip. It's literally clip. Like I'll play the clip during the, um, like, 
um, when, when I add it. But anyway, <laughs> no, 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 no. It's demonetized immediately. What are you saying? Out of warning. Out of warning. <laughs> we have to demonetize first to be oh. to be the. Yeah, hey, that's not gonna help us. <laughs> Yeah, no, you showed me um, that clip. His knee was like the other. His knee literally, other like in slow motion, just went that's, backwards. No, like this, oh, that's something I have never understood about just like sports in general. Is like they will show like replays of people getting brutally injured, like slow mo shots, multiple angles, like whatever. But like they still try and like cut away and be really awkward when like someone on the field or court curses. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, they are grown ass adults. Like you think this doesn't happen, but it's like, Oh, well he shouldn't be saying that. Or it's like, what's the Joe Buck call where Randy Moss moons, like whoever. And he's like, <laughs> a truly disgusting act. It's like, that's what we're concerned about. But Oh, don't worry. Our children are fine watching these people get brutally injured and watching their bones snap in half. Or, like, the fact that they are, like, so into, like, this taunting rule where it was during the um, the Giants preseason game. Uh, their corner, Aaron Robinson, like, he, like, broke up a pass and then just does, like, the like the no flies or whatever, like, celebration. I guess flag for taunting. It's like, what? Like, he's just celebrating. Like, what do you want from him? But... That's can't show the kids that can't show the kids that players can celebrate, but legs snapping in half, people getting paralyzed and being permanently injured, life changing injuries. That's fine. Show that on slow mo. That's okay. Doesn't mean I never understand it. I it just I can't wrap my head around that. What was another really bad one? Oh, oh God, Mark McGregor. I'm looking this up at this point. Oh my God, oh, oh, the McGregor one from oh, last man. summer. I was watching that live. I was watching that live. Watched, that, was, that was insane. Yeah. That was yeah. insane. I, I watched that live because it's like the, the fight just starts. He like he goes in. I, th- I think it was to kick him, and then he just lands badly, and yeah, it's just over. It was, like first round too it was just right off the bat. Yeah, because I think it was like it was something about how um, Poirier might have checked his kick, and that might have like cracked it, and then yeah, when yeah, he yeah. goes back to like lean on it. That's where it just separated. But I don't know, because then there's, like, other people that are like, no, like, he didn't check his kick. I don't know enough about MMA to understand what the hell's happening. But I just take I take it with a grain of salt, and I, I'm like, eh, that kind of looks like that. But, yeah, that, that was, was bad. That oh. was crazy. Oh, I'm looking at the picture Beat right now. Ireland in a 1v1 twice. So, or, yeah, twice. So, that's what I take out of it. Because Corey's <laughs> from Louisiana. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm looking at that picture right now. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> So I actually found two more. These are really bad. I remember these. So uh, Paul George. Oh. Like that. Like, it was really, really bad. Uh, yeah, he broke his Dax leg ankle. so bad. Dax's um, ankle was bad. And this showed was so really many bad. replays of it. That's what I'm saying. Like, there were so many replays. And so they're like, oh, looks like he might have a cramp as he's <laughs> holding his foot. And it's not connected to his leg. Like, oh, God, I never understand that. And they're like, oh, let's get a slow-mo shot of that. Oh, my gosh. I oh, just found a really s- bad one. When Malcolm uh, Jenkins knocked out Brandon Cooks in the Super Bowl. That, oh, that one wasn't bad. That was hilarious. Well, yeah, that's also oh, true. Like, I was like, okay. I didn't think Cooks didn't get up for a second. He did it. He got his, he got his shit rocked. Like, I'm sorry. He just did. Gordon Hayward on NBA opening night. I, just I was said, just oh, about to say yeah. that was a bad one. I just rewatched the video and seeing his ankle just in that awkward position. Oh my gosh! Like horrible. whenever the like whenever like basketball players like go up and like somehow get like their legs taken out like even a little bit, I'm like, oh my god, this is about to be so bad. Like every single time, I get so scared for them because I'm like, please. For the love of God, just land okay. Just land on your ass. Please. Please just land on your ass. We can deal with a broken tailbone. That's exactly. fine. Yeah. I, mean, I, yeah. I have one from soccer, and it's from a body part you wouldn't expect. You can look it up, viewers, too. Search Sandro Wagner injury and just look at the first image. It's automatically not worse than a football injury. It's probably oh, okay. All right. <laughs> I mean, it's not. It's not. It's not from a body part you'd expect. Like, look it up right now. I just want. I just want to see your reaction. Oh, Sandro, Sandro Wagner. What? Wagner. W a g n e r. Injury. Where does he play? 
he was in the Bundesliga. I don't even know if he still plays. This was a few years back, but just just look at the image. Just look at the image. Oh man, what's that? That doesn't look too good. Um. Oh, is it his? F- yep. Wait, what, it's, it's, what am I looking at? His ankle? So. Oh, his finger, yeah, finger, no, finger. Oh, it's fingies. Oh, that's you not going it? the right you way. You see that? You see that? <laughs> oh, that fit, yeah. That's yeah. that's happened a couple times during football games. Though. Like I have seen. Well, because the thing is that I've actually seen that actually happened during high school the one time for uh, when I was a freshman. Um, I think it was either one of our corners or our quarterback. I can't remember who it was. He like came off the field and his finger looked something like that. And the trainer just looks at him and goes, all right, I'm going to count to three. Okay. Just put it right on. Like, one, no. Two. And then just pulls it on two. It just snaps no. it right back into place. So they just uh, they tape up his two fingers and he's fine for the rest of the game. But yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, <'cause laughs> the, the thing is about that, Andres, though, is that he like gets up and then shows his hand directly to the camera. Yep. Like, there's <laughs> yeah. no avoiding yep. it whatsoever. Yep. It's like, oh my god. And it's just that way. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh my god. Uh, this is just reminded me on my for you page. There's this like really old football game, like Blitz something. Where, like, oh, it's all been all over my for you page where you can like yeah. actually injure the players, and it gives you like a Mortal Combat like animation yeah. when you yeah. and it's like ruptured spine. It's real, yeah. It's, it's like, like a oh really gosh. old game. Yeah. It might be like t- it might be like early two thousands yeah. game. It's like Blitzball. Yeah, or that's it. Blitzball. Like that. Yeah, because it was like it was basically like Mortal Kombat yeah. with football. Because that's the whole meme about Miles Garrett taking off the helmet and hitting Mason Rudolph with it. Because that was actually a thing yes. in the game, and they were like, "Yo, he did the thing." Because <laughs> okay. he just he tacks him out of bounds on the sideline, and then takes his helmet off, starts just caving his head in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It. And I think there's another one. It was like ruptured punch punctured lung of four plays yeah or something like that yeah it was it, that game was ridiculous jacob care to share that screenshot you just took yeah look okay i can't send it in the chat but look up zach miller injury oh, it's, it's, uh, it's horrible it's, dude. it's basically a still shot of what oh 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 my Why god is that the first thing that comes up oh my god <laughs> Oh, oh, this one. Ah, oh, that one was really, really bad. This one, yeah. This is that terrible. is that tip is that tip fib? Huh? Is that a tip fib? I'm trying to get a good like, look at it. Oh. That's legit. Like that's real, bro. Like that. Like, that's like horrible. Depending on where the dislocation happened, it's either tip fib or you just tore every single okay. thing in his knee. Either uh, or- all of our viewers, please, for the love of God. Be warned. Yeah. These yeah. things that we are saying, <laughs> look up at your own risk. Yeah. Oh my, Jacob, God. that is that's wow. One of the like less gruesome ones. Don't in. put them in. Just don't leave them. <laughs> oh Let's my make it God. The... If put, like, anybody is curious enough to go and they look can for listen them, and they look can it up themselves. Look for them. That is exactly. Oh my God. They can Jacob, go and look these bad. up themselves. That's How bad. about this. I have a compromise. So I'll put a picture of one of the ones. Um, what of the no. in the Love. video for point one seconds? Here's the freeze frame, just real quick. Just they have <laughs> to freeze frame at the perfect time. <laughs> okay, that's that's fine. Actually, but... I'll do it if it's point one seconds. I'll do it for every single entry because it's not that. It won't. No way, you know. And if a viewer can uh, get a screenshot of, <laughs> uh, well. Well, dude, you know they could just look up the picture that if they know what it is, they'd be like, "Oh, I screenshotted it." And if they really oh, we wanted have to, to have like a washed athlete like watermark or something. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You do realize that YouTube can slow videos down to point two five. Okay, it's fine. It's, we'll we'll figure that out. We'll figure that out. Well, you just but, to, I'm gonna have to cut that from the recording. Oh God! You so, yeah, do put, like, one, yeah, because I'll, I'll put oh, this color in. How about that? <laughs> Sports are crazy, man. <laughs> like, oh my god. Professional athletes are whenever I hear when people are like, Oh, you should just shut up and play and it's like, dude, they are putting their lives on the line out there. Literally. Like seeing stuff like this. And what was the one soccer player that oh, literally had like a heart he, attack? Yep, yep, and like Christian died on the yeah. field and had to get resuscitated. I watch I watched the man die in front of my eyes. So Yeah. Well, yeah, he got resuscitated. Oh, but yeah. yeah. Um he's actually Wasn't playing for United now, but 
Christian Eriksen, yeah. uh, Danish player. Eriksen. He's um. So yeah, it was during the Euro. Um, who was Denmark playing? Uh, doesn't matter. But yeah, so Denmark's playing in Copenhagen. So they had the home. They had all the home fans there. Um, you see him slow down off the ball, and he just falls. And the ref blows the whistle. The players gather around. Um, this player for Milan, Simone Kier, um, what he does right away is as Ericsson's just lifeless on the ground, he moves his, like, tongue and then pre- starts performing CPR. And the players, he gets the players to, like, form a wall around, like, just yeah, for, so like for, so, the, so no one sees because, like, you don't want – like, you, you don't yeah. show that to people. Like, these are players. Like, you don't want to show them in their worst like that. So, yeah, it's just the game gets postponed for that. He, um, I'm nervous as hell because I'm like, this player just died in front of my eyes. But a few hours later, we find out that, um, um, he's, they use defibrillator, all that, and he gets uh, resuscitated. He's back, but like, yeah, um, yeah, that was that was rough to see because like it's off the ball, like that's scary. It's a heart, like those the heart ones are the scariest, man, because that's literally yeah. death. But yeah, no, he's playing it's like again. off. Yeah, when it's like when it's like non-contact, like those are the scariest ones. Absolutely. It's like, yeah. Oh my God! Like something just happened, like because yeah. you don't know what it is. Yeah, but that's that's where it's like whenever people are like, "Oh, they're getting paid to play sports." It's like, yeah, because they're playing it at such a high level that they're literally putting their lives on the lines yep. every yep. time they step out onto any sort of field. It's like because if they go up and they do something very athletic and they come down wrong, their entire career is gone. Like yep. their entire career, their life could be gone. Like they, it is crazy what these people do i got two quick questions sure or two one question one other thing um, yeah. the first thing i'll talk about is i just looked up the kevin Ware injury oh absolutely horrible my goodness what is this wrong we, know, we know we know we know it's bad <laughs> but like i, I had seen, seen it, it in a while and i looked it up and it's like probably about as bad possibly take before. i'm putting you on a watch list you, like what is wrong with you <laughs> you see it in a long time you know yeah, it's bad. You know it that it's, way you know it's bad when you know that the, you could see the bone yeah yeah <laughs> it's just horrible absolutely horrible oh uh, the second thing is um one other thing the athletes have to deal with is all that attention like you know from yeah. the fans and stuff so like they probably can't like depending on like the athlete, like you wouldn't see Patrick Mahomes like walking around like Target, like Target in like East Liberty, or like because <laughs> there are like two Targets in Pittsburgh. He just happens I mean, to be in town. He happens to be in town. In Pittsburgh, you know? but I also don't know a Target in like uh you know Kansas. He could or have just said like Mitch, Kansas or Missouri. Just said like Mitch Trubisky, East Liberty, or you know something relevant. Moving on. Well, he's saying a superstar, uh, I, oh, like okay. true. Like, are yeah. you saying hey. the MVP is not a superstar? <laughs> But like I'm asking, what I'm asking is, how would you guys deal with all that? Like, like if, we were, if we were, the super, like, if we were like, the not being able to go to a store without getting like pestered, you know, all that. Like, I mean, it'd suck. But granted, you're also getting paid like, exactly a metric ass load I mean, of money. So who needs to go gotta, out when you can just order everything off of like door, not even DoorDash. Door like, there's like <laughs> websites that deliver you food, like cooking the groceries yeah. and stuff. Yeah, hello, friends. Don't you think yeah. though, like if you had like just to do something normal though. Oh no! Yeah, that part definitely would yeah, suck. It's a trade off. Like, it's a man. I just want to go there, but then yeah, Andres, you're totally right. It's like a trade off. It's like, yeah, I'm getting all this fame, popularity, like money, whatever. But then it's also like, well, you also can't live a truly normal life because like that's what you're giving up for that. So like, I think, I don't know. It would depend. It literally would just depend on like how much money I'm making because it's like if I can like pay for like everything for my family at that point, it's like all right, like, I'll, you got it, I'll yeah, take easily. That. You know what yeah. I would unless say? you're Juju, a backup QB job, dude. Who is it? Is it like Chase McDaniel or whoever? It's like yeah. played on like six different NFL teams, has played five snaps of NFL football, <laughs> and has made forty one million dollars, and no one can recognize him in public. No one knows. That's who awesome. Is. Like that, that, that is a, the gig. That's fire. You that's know who fire. I would be. Who would well, I be? The uh, main character from Blue Mountain State. Because he actually was super happy being a backup quarterback. Like, he preferred to. Yeah. Be, even when he got the opportunity to Dude, play. He's, he's like, being no. a backup QB in the NFL is a dream. You might have to go in if the starter gets hurt. Oh, well. But besides that, you're still making a decent amount of money. If you go out in public, no one's going to recognize you like that. It's just a vibe. 
It really is. There are some stars though that do that. Like like I was just saying, Juju. Like he was literally walking his dog at Shenley Park. He was um just a few months ago, he was literally on Kathy's lawn. Like he yeah. was chilling yeah. there. Yeah. Like and we missed him sadly. I wish I saw Dude, him. We but, live like, two minutes away from Kathy and we missed him. I know. Yeah. I I I know so, someone we know is there. Yeah, if El you know. Senor. Yeah. El Senor Pittsburgh. Unspecified yes, Senor male Pittsburgh. that unspecified male that no, plays he's Mr. Pittsburgh. He, yeah. he knows everybody. Exactly. He yeah. does. Absolute but, legend. Shout out to Mr. Pittsburgh. There shout out to Miss Pittsburgh. There we go. But I wish no, I met you. He was doing like the crate challenge. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, yeah. yeah. on Kathy Lawn. I don't want to see how it was, like how it would be, like if it's as difficult as everybody is saying it was, and like it, may, like it came across on social media because like it was like a big deal if you did it, like you were able to complete that. I know Jacob would think he's like he's the guy, and he's gonna try to go on there, and then he's gonna like trip and fall. Eat it. And it's gonna go right on YouTube story, and I will repost that at him and make sure everyone sees that. No, 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 this is this is what would happen. I would get like maybe four or five boxes. I'd I'd get pretty far. Mm-hmm. I would get overconfident, and I'd be like, "Yeah, start speed running it." <laughs> and then, yeah, and then you would like go too fast, face into the crates, oh, like yeah. roll. <laughs> then I would trip and fall, and it would be a bad. It would be a bad. You know what? At least you're self aware about it. That's oh yeah, I respect. I respect. to buy a downfall. <laughs> oh my god! All right. Well, we're kind of coming to the end of this episode of the podcast. So, if anybody has any final thoughts, you can get them in now. Kenny Pickett's going to be an athlete Steelers is not easy. Super Bowl in the next five years. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, on that note, uh, we're going to be ending this episode of the Watched Athlete Podcast. So if you liked this podcast, if you've listened all the way through right now, uh, so please be sure to like, subscribe, share this around, follow us on our socials. Um, they'll all be in the description. Uh, I guess Andre is Stop advertising out Ruffles. Ruffles. Ruffles we can't give out free. Stop. We can't give out free advertising. Stop Shout it. Out. Bye, no. <laughs> okay. You Thank see- you so much for listening. Uh, <laughs> We'll see you next week. Use code watch.com. Right.